I'm going to do a little demonstration of libtard rhetoric hyperbole and how they lay a fart bomb of smoke screens every time they're cut off intellectually at the pass. They make an accusation, you prove logically that their ac accusation is false, and they just move on to another accusation. Watch. But what they're trying to do is say, you know, it doesn't matter that we're going to get less than 30% on the Latino vote. We're going to get so many more white people who otherwise wouldn't vote because we're going to appeal to them in a way that nobody's ever appealed to them before. That's where some of the creepiest stuff in the Trump campaign has come up, but it's tied to a political strategy. We have a special guest who may want to read. So basically what uh, Pee Wee Herman was just stipulating is that everybody that likes Trump are just white nationalist racists. This is the typical liberal Bolshevik Jewish charge to any white Christian who loves their homeland. As a matter of fact, I will tell you the Jewish liberals, Bolsheviks like Pee Wee here, Matto, produce Adolf Hitler's the way Italians make sausage. They literally beg to have an antichrist come after them. And they did this in Germany. They declared war on the German economy in 1932. People don't know this. That even Levi Strauss at R.H. Macy's was dumping German tableware and flatware into the Hudson River so as not to sell the, the material and give Germany any, mo any money when it was German manufactured goods. So while Germans were eaten out of the garbage cans in the Depression, brought on by a lot of New York bankers, and guess what? They weren't Episcopalians. Uh, they had the temerity, or shall I say chutzpah, to declare war on Germany. Well, they sowed the wind and they reaped the whirlwind. They also instigated Bolshevism in Russia. Read about the Jewish division in the Red Guards that slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Russian Christians. They don't tell you that in history class. Find it interesting. Back to all of this with Chris Matthews. Chris. Uh, more, former Mayor uh, Rudy Giuliani New York is on. Uh, Mayor, thank you for coming on. You always come home and I ask, and I just love having you on to argue with. So let's let's start the argument. Here it comes, uh, people. I mean, seriously. I was talking to Rip Dick. You were the guy that got reelected in New York carrying the west side of New York as a Republican. So you know how to build a diverse coalition. You read Rip Magaziner there by a lot in, a, in her home turf of liberal west side New York. So let's talk about building the Republican Party. Can you do it if you spot the other side? African Americans, who, by the way, would be part of any nationalist movement on my part anyway. They're a part of the nationalism. And, of course, Hispanics and this growing number of Asian American voters. We have that other 10%. How can you beat the other side if you spot? them a quarter of the vote. Now, what Mr. Matthews just il illuminated, Pee Wee Herman, Rachel Maddow's point, that all white people are for Trump. And Trump doesn't care about minorities. And Christian Americans don't care about minorities. More salient, that good m Latinos, Mexican Americans, black Americans who go to church every Sunday are in patriotic. Well, I don't know. I know history. Some of our greatest patriots were Puerto Ricans and blacks. Matter of fact, I remember the name Crispus Attucks, a Caribbean black man, first man to die at the Boston Massacre, fighting the racist British. Isn't that interesting? But you see how the libtards try to co-opt this and make it seem like there isn't a patriotic homeland loving black or hispanic in america watch giuliani tear him up well you can't i mean the simple fact is you can't i uh, won election the first time by three percent and then i won the second time by 18 when i won by 18 i had 50 percent of the hispanic vote and 19 percent of the black vote and i worked really hard uh to get there and i don't believe that your premise that the trump campaign was designed to create some kind of white nationalist I didn't how that. often i don't know <laughs> I did. somebody no, I don't, my I, colleague I, did so yeah so, peewee uh, who well, said that the first black president was an illegal immigrant, that he is okay. stuck in here from okay. Kenya. But then you had a guy who called all Mexican arrivals here, all people who came in the country, however they came in, as rapists and murderers. That's where the, that was the starting conversation in this campaign. Trump never said all Mexicans were rapists and murderers. He said many of the illegal people coming through Mexico the majority of which are probably Guatemalan, El Salvadorian, and Panamanians, 
happen to have a high percentage of illegal murdering gangster people. Henceforth the term illegal. If you disrespect the law about one thing, you're probably going to disrespect the laws about everything. Like they say about liars, Mr. Tinga Leg, Leg Matthews, if you'll lie about one thing, you'll lie about everything. And that's why you loved Obama and Hillary, because they're better liars than you. Okay, but then all throughout the campaign for the last four or five months, I think in every speech, at least that I heard him give, or everyone that I worked on with him, he talked about the African-American community, the Hispanic community, they're being left behind and wanting to use, I called them, he didn't call them that, Republican solutions for their problems, which is safety, you know, a good job, and a good education, as opposed to rotting schools, tremendous crime, like a person shot uh, every two hours in Chicago, and, uh, and neighborhoods in which uh, you're just not safe. And these are, these are communities that have been controlled by Democrats for 30, 40, 50 years without the intervention of a Republican or independent mayor who was able to straighten them out. You just go compare Chicago and New York and you get a perfect comparison between a city that had a Republican and then an independent mayor who straightened it out and a city that has over 600 murders this year already, eight last weekend. Well, that's a good point. Those are... How did your candidate, uh, and you yourself, refer to Hillary Clinton as sick and almost dying most of the campaign and that she ought to be in prison? See how he ran away from it? Well, that's a good point. In other words, checkmate, jackass. Eat this. He just shoved it right down your throat. Every place where libtards rule is Sodom and Gomorrah. And who's getting murdered? Minorities. But pasty face Chris Matthews you know, the ultimate white boy looks like the Gerber baby. He runs right away from that. They never pick up that gauntlet and say, you know, we really on the Democratic side ought to do something about it. No, they just want black people and Hispanics to vote for them and keep getting screwed. Stay on the Democrat libtard plantation. So he moves on to his next accusation. I mean, you can't claim to have run a clean campaign if you call your opponent that's a clean, a death's door that's a clean. and be belonging behind bars. That is, that is a, that, that, that's a perfectly legitimate conclusion from the FBI's report that she violated the law. Gosh darn it, her maid was faxing out and sending out top secret material. I put people in jail for that. Okay. I mean, What's she, wrong she, with the health thing? Do you believe you were getting so away enough to be she president? Is, she, is, she is getting away. Okay. He smacked her down. He smacked him down again on Hillary's illegality with her emails and servers and illegal handling of confidential top secret uh, material. And now he starts with, he, he doesn't even let Giuliani finish. And again, he's already got another accusation about whether or not she's healthy or not. Like all of us in reality world, haven't seen Hillary falling down on her head at regular intervals, and she needs to be assisted up and down stairs like uh, she's a ruptured duck. There's a tremendous number of violations of federal law. There's a sailor who's sitting in jail right now who took three photographs of the submarine and sent it home to his mother. Okay, now, when I was in the Justice Department, I used to sit there until four in the morning with top secret material. I was too darn, darn scared to send it home. Okay. And I sure, certainly wasn't going to give it to my maid if I could have afforded okay, two it. Points, uh, uh, it's a fa two points. Of Run away, Chrissy! He's a Republican appointee as FBI director, so he wasn't part of some cabal. By the <laughs> <laughs> so what about Hillary's health? What about Hillary's health? What about Hillary's health? You called the Georgia Valley well. What about Hillary's health? They put out the word that Hillary's dragging her away from the Philadelphia... Yeah, no, that didn't happen. Uh, Mr. Tingle Egg, that didn't happen. Who's doing that on your side? Who's doing that? Uh, you're tripping Hillary! Anyway, that's all we really need to hear. I just hope you guys appreciate these points as I still look back on the election results and laugh and understand the root of this. They just can't accept... Now, fast forward. This was uh, before the election, this interview. Now, fast forward with all the economic numbers, higher black employment, higher Hispanic employment, higher female employment than any time in our history.
but they still want to cling to the promises of the audacity of dope Obama and Hillary Clinton, who has pillaged, plundered, and raped every place she's gone. Little fat-ass Teletubby wrecking ball, go down to Haiti and ask a Haitian how much they stole. They'll tell you.